Now, I don't want you to miss out this year. I have a ton of great videos coming for you. And the only way you're gonna be notified when those get released is by clicking that subscribe button right below. So go ahead and punch that right now. Click the thumbs up, that really helps us out. And post your comment below, I'd love to hear from you. Oh man, hitting those fades can really be frustrating. It takes some distance off your drives. You could swing really hard like I did on that one. That drive could have gone a really long way, but because I'm swinging across that ball or to the left, it's a glancing blow. That energy isn't going through the golf ball like I'm hitting it with a hammer. It's kind of slapping across the golf ball. So if we take a look at my flight scope numbers there, if I look at the path or the direction and this is just measuring this right when my club is moving through contact. If I look at my path, I'm gonna see that was 7.7 .7 to the left. Now, I like to see with pro players, anything being under three or, or their path being under three degrees of zero or dead straight through the ball. Anything under two is phenomenal. Now, there's a great way to see if you're doing this without having an $18,000 launch monitor really easy way to do this, which I'm gonna to get to. And I'm also gonna give you a really simple drill, the most simple way to get your path going more to the right so you'll hit those straighter shots. But first, how do we know if we're doing this? How do we know if we're going pretty straight through the ball? Well, a good rule of thumb, if my ball is curving more than say five or 10 yards with a driver, then I'm too far off with the path. So if my ball starts down the left center and it fades like that one did almost 15, 20 yards or so from left center to right center, or let's go even more than this. Let's really have a, a big over the top type slice. We're gonna see there, that one really, really, really moved. I don't even know if it'll pick that up in the flight scope here. That ball ended up in the middle of the fairway, but it really slung out there. The path on that one was 16.8 to the left. That's that big over the top across the ball. You'll notice that even though I'm swinging really fast, 117 miles an hour, which is really fast, you can drive it well over 300, mile, 300 yards doing that. I'm only carrying that ball about 214. So if you see more than five or 10 yards curve from left to right on the ball, your path is too much to the left. We need to straighten that out. So we've heard all the tips. We got to shallow the club. We use the wrist. We swing from the inside. We get the club in the slot. We have our weight distribution, our feet, all these things that you could be working on. What's the number one thing that I see that easiest, the easiest way to get that path more to the right, and it's your hips. Here's exactly what I mean by this. If I set up and you'll see or on my original video, those last two, I would set up and it's like my upper body. So if I hung a golf club for my shirt buttons here, it's gonna be in front of my belt buckle, meaning that my body is tilted almost a little bit to the left at address. Now this is setting me up in a way to where now my hips are behind my upper body and it's really easy to swing to the left when I'm doing this. If I wanna get an inside out path, if I wanna swing more to the right so that I can hit that nice draw, I need to reverse this. And here's the way that I would think about this. A lot of times I'll see players struggle when they think about taking their hips. So this is the direction my hips are facing. If you look at my belt buckle here, they think about taking their hips and bumping them forward and bumping their upper body back and keeping everything straight to the ball. I want you to actually turn your hips a little bit when you're doing this or close your hips. So as I line up here, not only do I want my hips in front, but I also want to get them a little bit more pointing to the right. So what I mean by this, if I stuck a club out of my belt buckle, if there's a laser coming out of my belt buckle, I'm going to turn my hips so those are facing back this way a little bit more. What that does is that sets my body up in a position now where it's much easier to swing from the inside. If my hips are going this way and I'm open, now I'm gonna swing to the left. So grab your hips. I got a really step, easy step-by-step -step drill to do here to make you be, be able to feel completely comfortable while you're doing this. Put a club across your belt buckle and I, or across your hips. I want you to feel like that club is pointing to the right like this when you set up. So go ahead and let your hips do this. Drop down with your hands and arms and we'll see now how I'm very much tilted. This is exaggerated, but you'll see how my shirt buttons are behind my belt buckle, and you'll see how I'm a little closed off now where I can come more from the inside. Now, another key to this, I can't get in this position very easily if my weight is on my left foot. We really wanna have the weight shifting to your right foot very early in the backswing, and if I wanna make a path more to the right, it's a lot easier if I put a little weight on my right side. You'll see how naturally that gets my hips a little more closed. That gets my upper body tilted back a little more. If my weight is a little bit favoring my right side at address.
If my weight is favoring my left side of the dress, that's gonna to wanna to make me open. And if I try to close my hips and add my weight to the left, it's gonna feel super awkward. I feel like I can't even do it at all. So go ahead and do five or 10, a little weight to the right, closing the hips, then just let your arms hang down and do a practice swing. So five or 10 practice swings, really coming inside out. Now from there, let's go ahead and try to hit a ball while we're doing this. A little bit of a hip bump, weights on my right side, my chest is to the right of my belt buckle and this is closed here. The biggest part, I want that a little bit closed at a dress to aid in that inside out path. Let's see if I can get that path tilted a little bit more to the right now. There we go. See, that was a nice little draw there. And because I got those hips bumped, that makes it a lot easier to do that. So if I look at my flight scope numbers here, that ball drew just a, a yard or two, really, really nice. Ideally, that's what we wanna have. Very small amounts of curve on the ball. And we'll see my club path was 3.9 to the right. So almost exactly where I want it. Remember, anything under three is really good. So we saw that one, very little curve on it, right down the middle of the fairway, nice little draw, and I'm right there, right around three. Remember before, I was carrying the ball 214 on my big slice, swinging 117 miles an hour. That one, I swung a little bit faster, 119 miles an hour, but the carry distance went all the way up to 304. So 90 yards farther by not swinging harder, not being more athletic, but just adjusting how I was set up so I could come more squarely through the ball and deliver all the club's energy straight through the ball versus slapping or going across it. Now, the next thing here that people often struggle with is how do I square up the face? So I've got this club path going inside out. That's going more to the right, but I, like, I often have the face too open. So that ball starts a little more to the right and then fades a bit more. I wanna get that nice draw on there. Well, I have one of the best tricks, one of the best drills to make you do this. It's called the tennis racket drill of, in the move. It's what I call the move. So as you get that club coming down, I'm gonna do a certain way to square up the club with my hands and wrist to make this very easy. And if I do that, that ball is always gonna to start to turn over from right to left now that I've adjusted my path. So if you get both of these things together, you're gonna to be hitting those beautiful draws. I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in a second. All you need to do is just click the card that pops up on the screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video and you'll start getting that path to the right and getting those nice, beautiful draws. Let's go ahead and get started. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked about worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm gonna be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time,